If you plan on cruising out of Port Everglades and Fort Lauderdale, you're going to want to watch this video. I'm Jeff, and this is Backroads Tourist. Port Everglades is one of the busiest cruise ports in the world, and if you're like me, you like to fly in a day or two before your cruise. Now get ready to take notes because I think I found the perfect place to stay before you sail on your vacation. Now, I want to make it clear that I'm not being compensated at all for what I'm about to say. No money, no free rooms, no perks, no nothing. In fact, the hotel doesn't even know that I'm doing this video. I just want to share this information with you because I want you to be as happy as we were. Just a few miles from the airport around Marina Mile Boulevard and Southwest 12th Avenue, you'll find several hotels including Best Western, Holiday Inn Express, Candlewood Suites, and Hampton Inn. We stayed at the Hampton Inn and we absolutely loved it. Let me tell you why. Location is the first perk. The Hampton Inn is just a few miles from the cruise terminal, and when you check in, you can arrange for a shuttle the day of your cruise. I'll have more thoughts on this a little bit later on in the video. But get this, the Hampton Inn is literally just across the street from a shopping mall, and trust me, you're going to find that very convenient and helpful before your cruise. But before I tell you about that, let's talk about the hotel itself. My wife and I really liked the room. It was a decent size, clean, and had all of the amenities that we enjoy. We thought the bed was comfortable, and my wife really liked the pillows so much that she made me take a picture of them so that we could order some when we got back home. The hotel has a fitness room, business center, an outdoor pool, and patio. Plus, they have a really decent hot breakfast in the morning. To top things off, they offer a free shuttle from the airport. So the hotel itself gets top scores from us, but the shopping center just a few steps away was the icing on the cake. There were lots of dining options ranging from McDonald's to a Mediterranean cafe to a bar and grill. And that's where we chose to have dinner the night before our cruise, Slacker's Bar and Grill. Now, everyone has their own tastes, but we thought that it was good food and lots of it. It was the perfect meal to kick off our vacation. We were cruising with Princess on this cruise, and as of the time of this recording, Princess allows each passenger to bring a bottle of wine on board in their carry-on luggage. You can also bring soft drinks with you, again, as long as it's in your carry-on. So we paid a visit to the liquor store as well as the Wind dixie to get our beverages of choice for the cruise. Both stores are right next to each other. We also made a stop at both the Dollar Tree and the Big Lots to get a few other necessities for our trip. If you've forgotten something or just don't want the hassle of bringing it from home, this shopping mall is a lifesaver. By the way, we did pack an extra carry-on in our luggage just for the wine and the soft drinks. But if you don't have one or you forget to pack one, I'll bet you can find one at Big Lots. Now, just for the sake of logistics, both the Hampton Inn and the Best Western are on the north side of Marina Mile Boulevard. All you need to do is walk across a residential street to the shopping mall. But if you're staying at the Holiday Inn Express or Candlewood Suites, you'll be on the south side of Marina Mile and you'll need to cross that busy street. This is one of the reasons we chose the Hampton Inn. There weren't very many negatives about staying at the Hampton Inn, but there were a few. However, none of them directly involved the Hampton Inn. For instance, as it started to get dark, the shopping mall started to feel a little bit more sketchy. There were more people just loitering around and sitting on the sidewalks. No one approached us and we didn't have any incidents, but we just didn't feel comfortable. The shuttle service seemed a little disorganized, and part of that was due to people not listening for their names to be called by the shuttle operators. Seriously, people, get off your phones and pay attention. 
The vans were a little crowded, but they did get us to the cruise terminal quickly and efficiently. There was an additional charge for the shuttle to Port Everglades. Now to save yourself the hassle, you might want to consider getting a cab, Uber, or Lyft to the cruise terminal. Here's one more thing about the shuttle experience. The hotel does have a pretty large lobby area with lots of seating. But I can guarantee you that you won't be the only ones waiting for a shuttle. So plan on being in the lobby a little bit early just to make sure you get a seat. The price of the room was a little bit more than what you'd normally expect to pay, but it wasn't outrageous. When you take into consideration the touristy location, I think that it was on par with other hotel properties in the area. So yeah, we're happy with the Hampton Inn. We enjoyed our stay, and we'll stay there again the next time we sail out of Port Everglades. I hope you found this little video helpful, and take a look at these other videos for more helpful cruising tips. I'm Jeff, and I'll see you on the back roads or on a future cruise.